The day was 14 January 2019. Team India was a couple of minutes away from the historic qualification to the knockout stage of the Asian Cup, but it wasn't for so. And we conceded a late penalty in the dying stages of the game against Bahrain, which led to a goal and also the end of Stephen Constantine's era, which was very worthwhile, if you consider from an overall aspect. The Englishman was disappointed with Team India's inability to hold on to the most crucial game. India defeated Thailand and gave their all against host UAE in the 2-0 defeat. But the loss against Bahrain was unacceptable for Constantine, as India only needed a draw to go through. As Constantine left, the AIFF was in a dilemma to find his replacement amidst the heartbreaking loss that resulted in elimination from Asian Cup. It was in fact not an easy task to find someone for the people as Constantine was one of the most successful managers ever to coach Team India, in terms of most wins and also the highest winning percentage in that regard of the games. A list of 35 candidates out of the 250 plus applicants were selected and then interviewed and it even included some top names, such as the likes of former England coach Sven Goran Eriksson and many other well-known names like Sam Allardyce and Gianni De Biasi had all shown interest. But due to lacking of a good budget, the AIFF was left out with former Barcelona assistant coach and Bengaluru FC manager Albert Roca, former Croatia manager Igor Stimac, South Korea's two-time World Cupper and under-23 coach Lee Min Sung and former Sweden under-21 coach Hakan Eriksson. In the end, it was Igor Stimac who was appointed for the position of the Indian men's national team head coach on 10th of May 2019. The Croatian had stints in Asia before, with the Qatari side AI Shahania and Iranian club Sipahan FC. Stimac did have a couple of stints with clubs in his native country, but the most impressive one will probably be with Hajuk Split and the Croatian national team, which included some of the world's best-known footballers, including the former Ballon d'Or winner Luka Modric, Rakitic, Perisic, Kovacic, Brozovic, Mandzukic and others. Stimac's first assignment as India's coach was in June at the end of 2019's Kings Cup in Thailand. The first game ended in a defeat to Kurako, but the second game saw a win against the host Thailand which ensured India finished third in the competition. The Kings Cup was followed by the Intercontinental Cup in Ahmedabad in July. India didn't have the best results as they ended up losing to the lower-ranked Tajikistan and North Korea, but drew with the higher-ranked Syria. A fourth-place finish on home soil was the last thing the Blue Tigers did before starting the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. India finished third in the group which had reigning Asian champions Qatar and Oman along with known opponents Afghanistan and Bangladesh. The team made headlines with their draw against Qatar in their backyard but also faced severe backlashes as they were unable to defeat Afghanistan twice and Bangladesh once. All three matches ended in a draw. India lost to Oman twice and lost once to Qatar during the qualifiers. The only win the team managed to get from the group was the win over neighbours Bangladesh in Doha. The 2021 SAF Championship was a success when we say India became the champions, but it wasn't a fruitful one as India ended up drawing with lowly ranked nations like Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. A narrow win over Nepal and big wins over hosts Maldives in the semis and Nepal in the final handed over India's 8th title of the SAF Championship. In the 2023 AFC Asian Cup qualifiers, however, India performed brilliantly on home soil to earn qualification for the finals in Qatar. The results included win over Cambodia, Afghanistan and Hong Kong. If we take a look at all the international friendlies India played excluding the official tournaments between 2019 and 2022, then we will see that most of them have ended in defeats. The losses to Bahrain, Belarus, Jordan and Vietnam along with the humiliating loss to UAE are a testament to India. India drew with Oman, Nepal and Singapore while the only victory during the period came against Nepal. But from 2023, it was a different era altogether. India won the Hero Tri-Nation Cup by defeating Myanmar and Kyrgyz Republic in March. In June, the Blue Tigers won the Hero Intercontinental Cup by defeating the likes of Mongolia, Vanuatu and Lebanon and also drawing them once whereas the team completed the treble by winning the 2023 SAF Championship in July with wins over Pakistan, Nepal, 
draw with Kuwait and a win over Lebanon and Kuwait on penalties in semi-finals and finals. Having triumphed in all these three aforementioned tournaments in 2023, the Blue Tigers have now set their eyes on the foreign soil adventures in September and October. Team India will be participating in Thailand's King's Cup and Malaysia's Merdeka Cup. The Thailand and Malaysia tours will help Stymat's India team to understand where they exactly lie ahead of the combined 2026 FIFA World Cup and the 2027 AFC Asian Cup qualifiers will commence in November. Meanwhile, the 2023 AFC Asian Cups in Qatar will be starting in the middle of January of next year and will be the Croatian's greatest test. As you might know from our previous video, that Team India is unbeaten this year and India hasn't lost a game in the 11 games they have played this year. Also, adding to it is that the team has conceded just two goals in 2023 and both of them were against Kuwait. Also, the Blue Tigers scored 16 goals in those games. With seven wins and four draws, India has become an unbeatable side in recent times as a team that no one would want to face as an underdog but a real competitor and hopefully it stays like that as long as possible since it will only add to the players' confidence to face Asia's big boys. Coach Igor Stymach has absolutely brought a change in Indian football ever since his appointment. It's true that initially, the team was not getting the results but he was trying to implement a new set of playing style that mostly relies on keeping possession of the ball from the previously prevalent under Stephen Constantine and Bob Hutton era which consisted of the old-fashioned system of playing and hooping long ball and hoping someone in the forwards does the miracle by himself. India generally used to play counter-attacking football and also defended for 90 minutes with low blocks to avoid defeats and hold on to the draws. But this modern fearless India team tends to keep the ball to their feet as much as possible and also creates opportunities for scoring in the opponent team's half. This was a welcome change that the fans had always wanted and Stymatch deserves a lot of credit for this transition in the way the team has adapted in the space of the last four years. Igor has also handed national team debuts to many young players which shows his belief in them and also thinking for the future. This was never the case with coaches before him as they often preferred to call up a set of players who formed a national team despite being in poor form during the season. They would have still managed to make it into the team but under Stimach, only the deserving ones who have performed well throughout the season get a call up to the team. He once famously said even captain Sunil Chetri is not assured of his place in this team and he has been consistently performing during the season to be eligible for the Indian national team call up. It tells a lot about Stymac's mentality as a coach for whom everyone is equal in the team and no one is greater. Under Igor's team match, so far India has played 41 games and out of them the Blue Tigers have got as many as 18 wins, along with 12 draws and 11 defeats. The winning percentage currently records at 43.9%, which is not the best but also not the worst and it's pretty decent when we consider him in a comparison among the overall tallies of the former team Indian coaches who were at the helm. In recent times, Steamatch was seen to support his players and staff and he even made several proposals like bringing off PIO, players of Indian origin, expanding the number of teams in the IISL to 16, I-League without foreigners, reducing the foreigner quota in ISL, allowing and playing only Indian players in the key positions like strikers, wingers, attacking midfielders and centre-backs. Although the Indian national team gaffer is very famous for his controversial as well as accurate comments and statements in the press conference or the action and his instincts on the sidelines of the field for which he is regularly booked or even suspended at times, Stymach has always been trying to do all he can through his abilities to get the best out of football in India. After all, he knows what it takes to be at the highest level since he was an active part of the 1998 FIFA World Cup squad of Yugoslavia team that had gone to finish as the third best team in that edition. The Croatian's contract ends at the end of India's Asian Cup campaign. Previously, the AIFF had decided on an automatic extension clause that would automatically be triggered in case India managed to make it to the quarterfinals or the last eight in the 2023 AFC Asian Cup in Qatar. But after the recent run of results, the top bosses of the federation are quite happy with Stymatch and would be happy to sit and discuss his future with the Indian team at the earliest. Stymatch himself stated that in a recent interview that took place, 
Steinmatch also promised that if all the goals that he had promised to fulfill in the last 4 years were not met, he would leave his position by himself. Do you think AIFF should continue with Igor Steinmatch as the Indian national team head coach or should they bring a new manager to take us to the elite level after the conclusion of the AFC Asian Cup? Thank you for watching the video.